five scores Funk and Turner lead the way. Pretty much everybody else, though, has three, four, sometimes two goals. It's a scoring team from all quarters. That's the danger with NYU. We told you about Marks. Number five is Julia Rath, a junior from Rutherford, New Jersey. She's got two scores. 13, a defender from Shrewsbury, Massachusetts, and Worcester Academy is Rachel O'Keefe, a sophomore. Number 14, Nalani Ogawa, a junior from Mercer Island in Washington State. 15 is Kaylee Delaney, a senior defender from Ponte Vedra Beach, Florida, just south of Jacksonville. As number 16 is Ashlyn Kragowski. Kragowski will be a senior from Dunstable, Massachusetts. Also went to Worcester Academy. Number 17, Gabriella Funk. As she, we said, one of the leading scorers on this team from Fremont, California, with five scores on 22 shots. Number 20 is Isabel Turner, senior from Fort Lauderdale. She also has five scores. Those are the two to watch offensively. 27 with two goals is Isabella De Almagro. De Almagro, a senior from Pembroke Pines, Florida. And 34 is Maddie Howard, a defender from Glen Ellen, Illinois. As those are the starters, Marhan Marks, Rath, O'Keefe, Ogawa, Delaney, Kragowski, Funk, Turner, De Almagro, Howard. And on the other side of things for Emery, once more, it is Pratt, Collage, Fitzgerald, Kolsky, Bresco, Santi, Moore, Robertson, Hilsey, Bell, and Blanchard. William Schindler with you. Sit back, relax. You see this, uh, at least the records here as we get started in the morning. Pretty evenly matched. We said five in a row. Meeting wise, have ended in one one ties. So we could go on air and just say it's a one one tie and then sit back and relax and say, prove me wrong. But We'll have to see here as certainly evenly matched would be an understatement. And we will have to see how this one progresses as far as records, final results, and where we go. Emery wearing the white shorts today, trimmed with white shoulders, blue tops. And they move right to left across your screen. First test there for Marhan. As all white, trimmed with, of course, some purple. They are the violets, after all, is NYU. They are going left to right, so they will advance left to right across your screen right now, holding it in the midfield. As they'll bounce it out to the far side wing, Emery with collage steps in the way. Nice play there. And Bresco, a momentary touch, so they're going to try to work it around on that far side. So far, nobody's really held on to it as far as offensively possessing it. Comes back, nice sweep of the leg from Santi, although that's headed over toward the Emory bench. It's held in bounds. Good play over there, and they'll lose it as I think, trying to see with these numbers, I think that's Aubrey Blanchard over there. He did a nice job keeping it in bounds. NYU playing defensively, going back through their own keeper in Marhan. They'll go back out to that far side back and trying to work their way down that far side wing. So short passes right now for NYU. As tied up over there, it looked like De Almagro lost it out of bounds. A throw for Emery. Goes over Blanchard's head. It'll ricochet back toward the middle of the pitch. Now picked up by Emery. An opportunity here for Hilsey. Move it to that far side wing. Emery's going to try for a cross. Instead, they'll come back to Hilsey just outside the box now. She'll weave her way back inside. Hilsey, a right-footed shot. It was deflected and held onto by the keeper in Marhan. She connected well. It got one of the backs, though. It slowed that down. Could have given it enough wobble, perhaps, to get by the keeper. It didn't. It's a good play by Marhan. Screened in front of her. And the keeper from Glen Ridge, New Jersey, will have her 53rd save of the season. Here's Collage. Thought about advancing. Now will swing it back through her defense. 
And so an opportunity for the young lady from Texas, Robertson, to get the first touch of the afternoon for her. So is it case still the morning? Uh, we have fallen back an hour here with the time change. Fitzgerald will receive it, left foot advancing it into the midfield, looking ahead to try to connect to Kolsky, couldn't do so. It'll be played back, Grigalski with it. And as NYU comes over to this near side for the first time, Fitzgerald trying to track it down. It'll be a throw for her as she cut in front of Ellie Marks. The sophomore from Seattle, Washington, throw in for the Eagles. Get it in, Shivani Bell now off the carom. Plays it to the middle, trying to get it to Kolsky. It'll come back, held by Bresco. Playing to Bell, a nice pass, dropped it into her here on the near side wing. Here's Shivani Bell working against a defender in front, crosses it, that'll be flipped back outside as she was working against Delaney. And we'll have a throw here on the near side for the Eagles. Comes back out, Fitzgerald, a shot on goal, and why not from that far out? It was on frame. Didn't have the wobble you need to maybe shake a good defender and goalkeeper, Megan Marhan loose. Second shot of the day for the Eagles. They have not had bad performances shooting-wise. They've outshot their opponents this year, 378 to 119. It has been something. They've outscored their opponents 39 to 10 on the season. And they'll lose it on that far side. Blanchard couldn't hold on to it. An NYU throw from almost in the middle of the pitch. Certainly a team that has had the opportunities. There's Shivani Bell, a nice pass, connects with Kolsky. Kolsky lost it off her foot, keep her up. Marhan dives to her left to prevent perhaps a Kolsky goal. So aggressive keeping, and Amory again has been the aggressor in the early goings in the first five minutes. Now with two shots already. They have made Marhan work a bit. And so setting the tone in that first five of the 45 here in the first half. Chipped into space, really nobody home. Although now, let's see, I think that's Kolsky there offsides. Kilsey was back, Kolsky trying to go in. Not really sure who was offsides unless Kolsky left and it was a late flag. That's probably what happened. Couldn't really tell if anybody else was. Looked like the ball had already advanced. Either way, that's the call. And here is the goal kick from Marhan. Lifted low on a liner. Come back through the defense. Right now, it's been a lot of defensive work as O'Keefe had it for the moment. Emery fighting for it and gets it on that far side. A quick throw. They'll go into Kolsky. Ricochets back off to Blanchard. Blanchard, big left foot and rolls all the way to the keeper. Marhan will have it on a ground ball. Third shot for the Eagles. Like we said, we've got one less listener. It's okay because he's in town. Got to meet Aubrey Blanchard's father from Housatonic, Mass. Flew in, I guess from, uh, he said from Albany. I actually got colder, he said, as it fl he flew down here. <laughs> From Albany to Atlanta went from the 50s to the 30s. That usually does not happen. But it's good to have him and good to meet him as the Eagles looking like if they could set the tone early, it wouldn't be a bad thing. 5-1-1 ties in a row. Here's Shivani Bell. As they've done that against NYU. Shivani Bell comes back. Kolsky, right-footed chip just over the crossbar. Well designed, two veterans, Kolsky pulling the trigger. The senior from Miami got it from the young lady from here in Atlanta and also a senior, Bell. She's got six assists. Bell has had a good year with five goals, six assists, totaling 16 points overall. Of course, Kolsky with five scores of her own, 12 points for her. You add in those two assists. And the Eagles having Fitzgerald throw it in, get it to Shivani Bell. That was a very good opportunity. It was not far off. Another throw for Fitzgerald. Played forward. 
Collage, a little miscommunication as Hilsey cut there. Robertson fighting for it. Hilsey comes back for it, and now will play out to the far side as it looked like El Amagro had it for the moment. They'll play it out to the far side wing. Will NYU, first time really, Emery gets tested, goes off the end line. And we've got a goal kick here for the Eagles and Haley Pratt. So Pratt set to kick it away. First time we've really got to mention her, the senior from Charlotte, North Carolina. Seven goals, or I'm sorry, uh, seven goals against. Very low goals against average of 0 0.52, 52 saves. Five shutouts and an 881 save percentage. It's been a very good year. Fitzgerald cuts in front of the would-be attacker, although getting it back for NYU is Ellie Marks. Marks working down this near side, keeps it in bounds, crosses, Marks cross, shot on frame, held onto there by the keeper as it looked like it came off of the foot of Isabella De, uh, De Amagro. Two scores for the senior from Pembroke Pines, Florida. Knocked away. Fighting for that was Bresco. Came off, though, of an NYU player. Fitzgerald will come for the throw here on the near side as we tick down to the 36-minute mark in the first half of play. Still no score, although Emery has outshot NYU 4-1. to one. William Schindler with you. We thank you for tuning in as it's a beautiful day. It is clear, crisp, and cool. Emery, another throw. Giovanni Bell had to come right to her. Why not? Throw it right away as Emery with Kolsky. Crossing to the middle, outpaced Blanchard. They had her open just a little bit too far for the freshman to catch up to it. The opportunities, though, are starting to present themselves offensively. And so that is good news for Sue Patberg's squad. They have pretty much controlled it all offensively. Here's Kolsky. Kolsky pulls it back, left-footed, tried to thread the needle, couldn't do so there. Comes back, chips away. As on that far side, Emery, they're going to turn it in. Nice footwork, and that'll be lost. Be a quarter for the Eagles. I believe that on the outside was Bresco. It'll be Shivani Bell to take... The far side corner. Pack everyone in the box now as see what Giovanni can do. Bit of an outswinger. And that is headed up by Kolsky. Headed back by the defense. Still in the air. Bicycle kicked back towards the net and fighting for it as a player went down. I believe Blanchard got that bicycle kick back towards the net. Couldn't hang on to it though. At least uh the keeper bounced right back out. And now NYU, a good defensive stand, though, as their defense contributing with the keeper to keep Emery from scoring. Into space, trying to track it down as Bresco turning it is Marks. Too far. Marks turned it, ran out of real estate. Goal kick for the Eagles. So still scoreless. Emory, though, five shots to one. They had some good opportunities on that corner. And we said when you look at conference records, this is going to be a big one. Also could be a preview of coming attractions for the Eagles. You look at their schedule and what could be ahead with Rochester. Senior day on the 9th at 11 a.m. As Rochester lost in Rochester 1-0 to this NYU team. So I would say a win today would bode well as looking at what lies ahead for the Eagles with one remaining regular season match. A team that has lost to NYU. On the outside, nice play there by Bresco. Fighting for it heavily. Collage, Hilsey. Trying to work it up the chain here. Go to that far side wing. Looks like that will be Blanchard. Cutting back. Loose ball comes over here to the middle of the pitch. NYU. A team that 
you said not a bad record, but uh, had a little bit of a losing streak going with three in a row before now they've won two in a row. They lost to Carnegie Mellon, Wash U, and the University of Chicago in a row. Two of those are at home. Actually, a better road team is NYU, which is quite interesting at 5-1. and one. So Wash trying to track it down. Challenge there. NYU will win it. A pass through and an opportunity for De Almagro. It's sent away there by Peyton Robertson. Off to the far side wing, a throw-in upcoming for the Violets. So they'll have the throw. No substitutions yet. NYU looking for a little bit of help. A long throw. Nobody's around there. They finally will dump it in. Comes back outside, trying to squeeze it through. Hold on to finally forced out there by Peyton Robertson. Nice play there by the Eagles. And a whistle stop things. Advantage for NYU after Blanchard committed a quick foul. It'll come back, Giovanni Bell cutting in front of the passing lane. It'll squirt back out. And actually that went to Kolsky, then back to Bell. Comes back to the middle. Collage. They'll play it outside. On the run is Hilsey. And trying to get it into Kolsky, and double team came off the end line. However, it nets Emery, second corner of the match. Giovanni Bell will get an encore. It's a pretty good one before. We're under 31 minutes left to play in the first half. And let's see what Giovanni can do with it here. Is Giovanni Bell ready for her second attempt at a corner? Again, middle of the box. Gets by everybody. Squirts loose all the way to the near side. Blanchard will watch it roll out. And it'll be a throw for NYU. Not even sure if that touched anyone. It might have touched an eagle either way. It would have come off the foot of Bell and been out of bounds on the eagles. But that was a ball that... That was just a little too high for everyone. Got through a lot of folks without being touched. It was a minor miracle. Played off by Paige Santi. Throw in here for NYU. Was dribbling down was Dale Magro. It will be a throw in for Julia Raff. Junior from Rutherford, New Jersey. Two goals for Raff on the year. Actually check that. That is 15. That is Kaylee Delaney. The ponytail was covering up that one for a moment. It'll come in there to Gabriella Funk. Funk, a left-footed cross. And that's deflected at the net, hung on to, though, as Isabel Turner turned it in front to Haley Pratt. But Pratt with an easy save. Second shot of the afternoon at the 29-and-a-half-minute mark for NYU. Still no score between these two. Like we said, it has been an interesting matchup with the last five matchups. That's right, five in a row, ending in the same result, same score. 1-1 ties. I, I mean, that's almost, if it if it goes 1-1 one, one here for a sixth time in a row, I'm just going to go buy a Mega Millions ticket or Powerball ticket or whatever. Maybe I'll buy both. I mean, at that point, the odds seem to be looking good. And that is something you just do not see the same results like that, especially ties. I can't believe the overall team record of 12-1-11. Where they faced each other. In college sports, we throw those out there. They're kind of interesting. They don't mean much, really, because there's so much of a changeover. Obviously, every four years, and some sports even more nowadays with just the way it goes. D3 a little bit more immune to that, but you see a lot of changes in rosters every year. So usually it's not, it's not the same players all the time, so to get things like that going on, it's Quite fascinating. Here's Fitzgerald again on the throw. Emery working it down this near side wing. And they'll get it in with Lindsey Bresco. Bresco a little bit too high over the head of Shivani Bell. So NYU will backtrack. I'll watch it roll out as that was Nalani Ogawa. Watching it go past her and it'll be a goal kick though for the keeper in Marhan. Told you about how good Marhan's been. I mean, it's two keepers. When you look at really the way these teams are constructed, going back to those tie scenarios, 
they're very similar in the way they play, the way their roster lines up. They're good teams defensively. They can score really from all parts of the roster. They run deep. Amory fighting for it. Blanchard, a nice play. Blanchard comes off her head, gets it to her feet, taken away, though, before she can pull the trigger. It'll be played out there by the defense of Ogawa. And now a shot towards the net. Just a little bit off that far side, but on a short hop played by Marhan. But, I mean, if you think about it, Emery, there's not really one player you go to for scoring. In fact, their leading scorer comes off the bench. Natalie Clark, with eight goals, has not started a game so far this year as the freshman from Boca Raton. We, in fact, we saw her pretty late in the first half of the last time out, and then they like to play her the second half. And so they like that spark off the bench. But, I mean, it's just an interesting facet when you uh, – Here's Natalie Clark. I'm trying to see if that's her. I'll check in here in a little bit. But there are just some interesting facets when it comes to how the teams are constructed. Emory will have their first substitution. Let's see who that is. That might be Mahoney. It is. So it will be coming out Lindsey Bresco, the sophomore from Brentwood, Tennessee, the young lady from Massachusetts, Brookline to be exact. That's 12. Lauren Mahoney checking in. But Emory can score from many different positions, many different players. It's got solid goalkeeping. I could echo those sentiments about NYU. And that's why it's so even. Trying to get it ahead to Ellie Marks. Marks covered by Fitzgerald. She'll play it to the middle of the pitch. Funk with it for the moment. She'll go to the far side. Picked up there by, it uh, looks like, I believe, was Kolsky comes in front, knocked away as it went out to Blanchard and then Collage and Fitzgerald will throw. And we're starting right now. The sun kind of gets a little bit of a glare. I'm trying to see with those jerseys. A little bit of a different look for the Eagles. Not too bad, though. Marks, Fitzgerald on her hip. Plays back through the defense. NYU was trying to thread the needle to De Almagro. Off to that far side. So they'll reverse wings, use the whip, come across midfield as Shivani Bell in front of her. There's Santi, swipes it away from De Almagro. Throw in, though, for NYU on that far side. Milani Ogawa will throw it in. 24 25 on the game clock and ticking without a score to this point, although Emery has had perhaps the best opportunities as Mahoney fighting for it to win that challenge. Comes back across midfield, dumps it out ahead. Maddie Howard, the senior from Illinois. And for the moment, Shabani Bell will pick it up. Here's Bell on the run. She's got Blanchard to her left, the far left. Kolsky as well, and she'll put it on frame, held onto by the keeper after knocking it down. Falling on top is Marhan. And an opportunity might have gone in on this near side post. Perhaps the best opportunity for the Eagles on their seventh shot. As we said, that has been the story all year. They've certainly been the aggressor throughout every match. They've outshot their opponents by a huge margin, 378 to 119 coming in. And they've outscored their opponents, 39 to 10. And they've really started to play, I think, an overall very fine product of soccer. Kolsky, Hilsey, Mahoney. Santi had it come off her foot funny. It'll go out of bounds, trickling to that far side. Throwing for NYU. And, but, you know, early in the season, wasn't like it was a bad team, just so many opportunities and you, you saw the scores were not adding up to where the shots would be and I think you know they've always had a solid defense but now and I think the last match really probably one of their best overall as far as my money would go the overall performance I mean the defense has been stellar the offense 
has had its moments too and it's starting to get better and better and the quality of shots certainly has gone up trying to cross it is Rath instead she'll go right to Pratt as a little bit slow getting there with one of the strikers for NYU still nil nil Emery taking it the entire length there trying to get it inside couldn't do so as they were going to feed it to Kolsky Again, too much pace, got it to Marhan before Kolsky could get the touch. Ian Schindler with you, under 22 minutes left to play in the first half. You said it's a beautiful day out in the sun. It's got to feel pretty good. So two substitutions for NYU. Let's see who those are. I believe that might be Nikki Lee. It is. Sophomore from Hillsboro, California. Story of that should be Hillsboro, Florida, though. The Crystal, Crystal, Crystal Springs Upland School. Sounds more like Florida. It's listed as California. We'll go with it. Ellie Marks. Shadowed by her opposite number, an LJ Collage. Santi, left foot into space. Mahoney crashes over. Collage picks up the debris. Comes back off of the touch pass quickly to her teammate, Hilsey. Here's Mahoney on the run. Mahoney advancing it well. Mahoney trying to feed the Kolsky there. Couldn't connect. And it'll be ushered back out. Kolsky will challenge. Comes all the way back out towards the midfield. Holding on to it, Del Amagro. Del Amagro. Fitzgerald, nice separation. Fitzgerald wins that challenge. De Almagro, incredulous that she was fouled. Forward through past Kolsky. Played back to the keeper by Kaylee Delaney. Fitzgerald again. Comes over to Bell here on the near side. Bell, a little shimmy shake, trying to get loose. Did get Delaney for a bit. Comes back here after the ricochet. Bell with Delaney on her. Coming back, curling on this near side, cuts back inside, shakes Delaney, the crosser with the left foot, keeper punches it away, left foot rebound shot won't go there as Emery will try again from distance and just over the crossbar, a little too high, Hilsey had the shot earlier, that was taken on the outside by Emery and Moore, she's not shot it much, only her fourth of the year, just a little too high. Trying to see who NYU substituted. Sam March, I know, is one of them. Couldn't hear the rest. I think Bresco is back in. I have a replay, though, of this shot and sequence. You see it front, it ricocheted back out. There's that left foot blocked by a pair in front. And then this long shot up coming here. And just over the crossbar. Moore came out after that. Now you're substituted a bit. Hard for us to really hear the announcements and then uh, seeing those numbers over there on the other side of the pitch. We'll get you those players as they appear in play. One of those is Layla Kelts, a junior from Weymouth, Massachusetts. Just got a touch on it. Over here on the near side, Sam March. Fitzgerald covers her. March, nice move to get free, but Fitzgerald now a step in front. Fitzgerald with that speed beating March to the ball. Plays it off on the near side. It'll be a throw for NYU. Still good defense, though, to get uh, the numbers back for the Eagles. Arch is going to let it roll off and play it over to Ellie Marks. Seattle, Washington native to throw. Bell on the ground. Comes back to her. Bell, left foot, plays it forward. A momentary touch for Kolsky. Mahoney now in the midfield. And a long pass goes to that far side. Blanchard. 
Lost it. Picked up there by, it looked like, Ogawa. He played off the far side sideline. And a throw up coming for the NYU Violets. 17 minutes, 20 seconds, and ticking. Emory will have a trio to come in, including their leading scorer, Natalie Klar, at the next stoppage. I think that's four players. It's in the air there by Dresner. Collage lopes along with it before passing over now here to the near side and Bell. Shivani swiped away. Nice little fly tackle out of bounds. Rath. And we'll have the substitutions. Collage out. Let's see. I know Clark's coming in. Agnew, I hear. Williamson as well. Kolsky comes out. Trying to get the rest of the players for you for Kylie Hall's another one. Two that came in. It'll be Fitzgerald to throw it. Four new players for Emory in. Here's Klar. Squirts away. Mahoney cutting in front. Nice play by Lauren Mahoney. Throw here for NYU. Sam March will again hand it off to Ellie Marks. Actually check that. That's number nine. So she slipped in. Francesca Dimitrakis. Dimitrakis gets a yellow card. And she's not too happy about it. I guess for a throw-in violation of some sort, the official talking to her. Oh, I don't know how she violated her. Now the official is saying slow down. She's not happy. And with the yellow, I mean, she might want to cool it off a bit. Although, I mean, I have to say, that was a quick yellow card. I'm not exactly sure what she did or said. I'm sure the official has his reasons, although... Like we said, that, that seems like a quick, just on the surface, seems like a quick yellow. Again, don't know all of the circumstances going in, but it might be one of those more where you, you know, if there's, if there's not a safety violation, it seems like maybe just a warning talking to. But obviously if there's some disrespect going on. I got you. Thank you. All right, what we're told is he w the official wanted her in one spot, and she kept running past it. Did uh, Dame Atrakis. And so that was why the card was issued. So there you go. Del Magro will check out. She's coming in for NYU. It'll be Hadley Bouchella, freshman from Evanston, Illinois. Three scores for her. Here's Clar. Forward from Moore. And an opportunity here if Hall can win the challenge. Out of bounds. And in the direction of NYU. And Dave Matrakis. Long throw, Mahoney off of her thigh. March, Demetrakis. Come back, Cut by Dresner, Fitzgerald, left foot. Pinball back and forth with her and March. Throw in for March. Bouchala, Clark for the Eagles. It's in the air by NYU, middle of the pitch. Fighting for it, battling, Hilsey. Coming away with it now are the Eagles. On that far side, Kylie Hall working it to the middle. Tried to connect to Klar. Her rebound goes back her way. Said she'll chip it back to the near side. Headed forward there by Agnew. Into space. Comes back out. Fitzgerald will wait for it defensively. March will have it offensively for NYU. 
ball to Demetrakis. Still stops play. Advantage issued for NYU. So have the free kick as we tick down to the 13-minute mark. Still no score between these two. Emery's outshot, though, the Violets 9-2. to two. And Worth mentioning again, like you said, they've been very close contests, five in a row that have ended in 1-1 one, one ties the last five meetings. We could be headed there again. It's in the realm of possibility, obviously. And I think that's what we're just going to pull out one of those tables, put down that sign, says, prove me wrong. 1-1 one, one tie. Who knows? I guess we'll go find out here. As we've got another 45 to go after the 12 and a half on the board at the moment. Emery, though, has looked good offensively. Trying to find a finish. And they'll pinball it in front. Just crossed in front. That was actually a pretty good opportunity. It'll be a goal kick. Nobody was on the back end to close it off. Still, all in all, for Emery. Why not have one of those go past on that far side? Fitzgerald here on the near side. Fighting with March. Loose. Comes back. Dresner fought for it, lost it out of bounds. So Cora, or I should say Francesca Demetrakis, will have the throw. First we'll have a substitution. Julia Rath will check out for NYU. And I believe that is Spritel Hirano. It is. From Seattle, Washington. This is the first time I have ever seen a Spritel. As that'll bounce through the keeper out. And hangs on to it. Emery with a nice challenge in front of the net. Ariel Williamson was the one who had earlier put a shot on frame and there was challenging again. Far. Goes out to Williamson on that far side wing. Ten and a half to play. Williamson lost it. Not too happy about it. There's one that just lost on her own. Change of possession. Emery, though, still in the attacking third. And they'll keep it there as Mahoney steps in front. Nice play. Sets up inside the box. Crashing, though, to cross it out is the defense of NYU. Comes out to Sam March. Again, Fitzgerald wins it. Nice play there. Clark, left foot, trying to get ahead if she could to Hall. Off there by NYU. Here's Fitzgerald with the throw. Hilsey leaves. It's going to be Sidney Rosencrantz in for the first time for the Eagles. Clark off her chest to her feet. Now she's got a turn. Knocked away by the defense of Matty Howard. So the Eagles and Fitzgerald will throw once again. Looks like we might have another substitution. They won't buzz her in, though, for NYU. Comes back out. Dresner was fighting for it. NYU in March. Fitzgerald through her legs. Comes back outside. They'll connect here with Hadley Bouchala. And a whistle, a foul on Mahoney and the Eagles. So the advantage right at the nine-minute mark for NYU. It's right in the city in Manhattan. Rachel Keith will take the free kick. I just know it's, uh, it's got to be interesting to be a poor college student anywhere, but I mean, a poor college student in NYU, your, your money man, and it's not going, I feel like I'm a poor adult in New York City, so. Although that's got to be exciting 
time of your life to be in a bustling city like New York. Certainly a unique experience when it comes to colleges. NYU, one of the biggest, though, in the uh, city. I think of maybe Fordham as well, a bit more uptown. Henry on that outside, trying to penetrate if they can. This stellar defense so far. They'll cross it back toward the middle. They were looking there, perhaps for Agnew. Get a throw in for the Eagles on that far side. They get it into Agnew. Held on to, trying to cross it there. Couldn't do so. Mahoney headed back. Mayu, those steps right in front of it. And another whistle stops play. So an advantage for NYU here at the 720 mark. Still not a score. Emery, though, is outshot. The Violets 10-2 to two to this point. Mahoney outside. That's for Williamson. And I feel like overtime in some ways you feel like is almost inevitable between these two. Uh, NYU did sub. I've seen her turn around. She's been kind of guarded on the outside. I believe, okay, that's Cora Crichton. Freshman from Greenwich, Connecticut, not too far from the city. Six minutes and 40 seconds remaining here in the first half. March couldn't get away from Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald's done nice work. I mean, not only in this match all year. Statistically, you just, you know, she's not in the mix of points leaders because of where she plays, but she's been really good defensively and gives Sue Patberg a ton of minutes. Nolani Ogawa will get a breather. And as soon as she'll turn around, we'll tell you who came in. NYU. Right now they'll have a throw in with Dimitrakis to do so. Roll off the end line and a goal kick for the Eagles. By the way, we'll tell you that substitute. She still has to turn around. Right now she's kind of got the side angle. Doesn't help us number wise. We'll, we'll get you there. Pratt. Ready to send it away. 5.20 remaining. Nice play getting in front there by Kylie Hall. Comes back out. Hall loses it there. Then Matrakis, hard nose, comes off of her, though. And we'll have a throw in here for Fitzgerald. And the Eagles. It's back outside, pushed forward by the defense. Mahoney. Trying to wrestle the way there from Bushala. And Julie Beadle is who we were looking at. Doylestown, Pennsylvania. North of the greater Philadelphia area. Right now, it is settled more into a possession and midfield play, really, for the most part. Still having those strikes, but March sent it forward, sent away by the Eagles. NYU has sort of changed possession here a bit as Sam March loose. She's got two Eagles, though, to her left, the crosser. Out comes the keeper, and scooped up by the veteran Haley Pratt. Other than that, this... Offense has slowed down a little bit for the Eagles. Still about three and a half minutes to work with if they could deposit one in the back of the net. A huge momentum shift. Get the Eagles ahead. As we said, it bears repeating. 
The last five matchups have all ended the same way in 1-1 one, one draws. Ooh, and a big collision. And so that's going to net a card on Sam March, the junior from Glastonbury, Connecticut. A little bit too much into Dresner's body. She's okay. Second card issued for NYU. Bench is not too happy about it. Well, that one, I, I that one, I could see more of a card. And uh, before, I know the instructions through and keep her out. Make the play on it is Marhan. Closest to it was Kylie Hall. We're under three to play till the half. Jim Schindler with you. He said it has, weather-wise, been a nice change from the rainy weather we've had. Although it's cold now. <laughs> and now the Eagles. Rosencrantz cut off. Goes toward the end line, but Marhan, the keeper, stops it with her left foot before it crosses. Two and a half to play, first half. No score. But a drop kick from the keeper for NYU. Mahoney trying to win that challenge. Midfield cannot. Beetle played it forward. Goes off. Maddie Howard with a touch. You see Nikki Lee now. On that far side. Beetle a quick touch. Rosencrantz, a nice win on that pass. Here's Rosencrantz. Right footed shot held on to by the keeper, Marhan. Tell you what, Sydney Rosencrantz, though, the freshman from Wayne, New Jersey, had a good look at stepping in front of it. And you got to give her a lot of credit for having that vision. They'll try to go to Rosencrantz again, outpaced on the pass. Throw upcoming for NYU and Hadley Bouchala. 92 seconds left in the first half. Mahoney deciding where to go. Go upfield to Rosencrantz. Trying to play it back. Clar lurked. Couldn't connect. Lee challenged. Mahoney will win it and get fouled. Eagles at one minute now. Certainly will have an opportunity. Official. And everybody's situated geographically. I believe that's Kylie Hall who's going to take it. Emery stacks everyone here on the near side. Hall. Big left foot. And Rosencrantz forces it to the middle. They can't get the header with everyone lurking in the box. Unfortunately, Emery... With a good opportunity, could not get it in the back of the net. Closest it looked like was Samantha Agnew. Agnew, very close to getting that header. Couldn't make contact with it. Ten seconds. And we'll have to pull a rabbit out of their hat here if they want to score. Looks like we'll be going to the half scoreless. The good news is they have outshot NYU by ten. 12 to 2. However, we sit scoreless in what could be a sixth tie consecutively between these two. We'll have to find out in the final 45. Half time. We'll take a break. Back with more in about 15 minutes.
When you're in college, you kind of find out who you are. And throughout your four years, you develop yourself with all the different experiences, which leads into dedicating yourself to your community, to your family. So when you're a senior, you're coming out a well-rounded person. College has given me the flexibility to pursue my passions and my interests outside of the classroom and outside of the court or field. I've had the ability to get into different activities and organizations, and I've recreated my identity for myself aside from just being an athlete. Getting to be involved in a lot of different things, ranging from obviously being a student athlete to getting involved with my campus and my community, and not only being allowed to do that, but being encouraged to do that. The opportunity to be, to be able to study what I wanted to and continue to play the sport I love, to have the professors know me on a personal level. All of those things came together uh, very nicely in one package in Division Three. Being a part of the different activities and organizations that I've been a part of, I'm actually able to see myself where I'm like, hey, I actually can make a change. I'm one person that can make a difference. It really helps you develop thinking from other people's perspectives and looking at problems from outside the box. Division Three has helped me to develop teamwork skills, critical thinking skills, time management skills. I've definitely learned how to really be myself. I found out, yes, I am actually a good leader, and yes, I can actually put myself forward because I am good enough. I can do it. Coming in to college, I just wanted to get good grades and to do well, but I also made me realize that I have a lot of different career goals and I've learned so much about myself that I was always like growing and changing. When I got to college, it forced me to step up and become more of a leader. And I think that was something I had the capability of doing and forever grateful that being at a Division three school gave me that opportunity. You have to dedicate your time in the classroom. You have to dedicate your time in the gym, on the field, on the court. Our coaches and all the entirety of the athletic department, they valued the student athlete going out to community and trying something new and getting involved in campus life. You can get involved in so many different things. Um, so the possibilities are truly limitless for what you can do with your college experience. You can kind of make it your own in the Division Three setting. So I would encourage people who want to have flexibility to pursue different interests and passions to go D3. the ability to participate in my team and within the broader community. The perfect ending to a perfect season. Being a D3 student athlete has completely expanded my life. I learned how to lead. I really found a voice. What time is it? It's more about the experience rather than just a sport itself. Without the experience of being a Division III student athlete, I wouldn't be the person who I am today. NCAA Division III. Discover. Develop. Dedicate.
Welcome back, everyone. William Schindler with you as we get set for the second half of play right now. Nil-nil. Emory has outshot, though, NYU 12-2. to two. Corners, two for Emory, none for the Violets. Saves, 6-2 to two NYU. Leads in that category. Five fouls, though, committed by Emory, two for NYU. Those are your halftime stats. And we're underway. Two teams that have tied 1-1 in the last five consecutive meetings. Quite possible. It's going to happen here again today, <laughs> six in a row. All right, now we're tied, but it's nil-nil. So what fun adventures do we have in store here in this second half? We'll find out. It's been pretty even, like we said, for the most part, although Emory has had the advantage with shots. NYU's had their moments for sure, but played good defense. Emory's had some good looks. Some just have been good defense, good saves. Some have just been just a hair off, not by much. Giovanni Bell passes down that far side and couldn't connect there. Like they were trying to connect with Kolsky. Kolsky crashing down. Bell as well. He flipped out toward the middle of the pitch. NYU come over reversing wings for the first time. Blanchard with a challenge. Hilsey. It'll come back over NYU. Looking for some space with Sam March. Said some passing right now in the midfield. Gabriella Funk. On the ground to De Almagro. Saw her for a little while in that first half. Got a breather. Gets past Hilsey. Gets back to Maddie Howard. Far side lost by Ellie Marks. Throw in for the Eagles right in front of the midfield stripe. And that is a takedown. Well executed. And the WWE by Caroline Kolsky. Unfortunately, in soccer, that will just get an advantage. Tell you what, Kolsky, that was that was impressive. <laughs> she gave her a pretty good shove there. Everybody okay though, no card issued. Here's De, De Almagro. And the pass too far to connect with Ellie Marks. A throw in on the far side for Emery and Caroline Moore. The Eagles. Left to right across your screen, right to left attacking wise NYU in this half. Isabel de Almagro. We'll come back here to the near side. Trying to connect with Sam March. Can't do so. Long throw for the Eagles. Trying to get it to Kolsky. Do it once more. Peyton Robertson will do so, the freshman from Dallas, Texas. Solid first campaign for her. Kolsky at her feet, spins away. Rachel O'Keefe shadowing her. Kolsky wins it back, crosses to the middle of the pitch, goes now back to Bresco. Bresco holding, challenged, loses it for the moment. Gabriella Funk, a nice play to knock it away. Outside, Santee on the ground. Loose, picked up again by NYU and Ellie Marks. De Almagro, forward into space, clipped away there by Dresner. Near side, Bresco on the run, trying to connect with Blanchard. And it'll be a throw in the direction of the Eagles, last touched by Nalani Ogawa. Robertson with the throw. Still scoreless here at the 41 minute mark left in regulation. Nice turn by Blanchard. Nobody behind. It got past the keeper, but a offsides flag was up. So Blanchard a little bit too deep. Eagles still trying to keep it to where they can force an attack. Kolsky challenges, almost knocks it loose. Instead, NYU plays it across using the width to the far side. Moore 
trying to separate Marks there. Could not do so. Comes back to the middle of the pitch. Good play. Mahoney jostled from behind. We'll draw a whistle and a foul. Like Sam March got into her from behind. We'll play it quickly as Dresner played over to the far side. Back to the veteran from Los Angeles. Near side. Pass from Dresner to Robertson, the freshman. Back to Mahoney in the midfield. It's a foot race with Funk. Mahoney out to the outside. Held on to by Moore. Comes back. Middle of the pitch. Loose ball. Santee fighting for it. Nice play by the young lady from Connecticut. And one choice, and that's to play it back to the keeper, did O'Keefe. Marhan right back outside. March into the middle of the pitch. Touch there. Gets away from Rath. And a whistle stops play on Emery. Where they could conclude the attack. Still scoreless. Second half of this match. Emery still is outshot. NYU 12 to 2. Nobody has officially taken a counted shot in this second half yet. Dresner locked arm in arm with Dale Magro. NYU trying to spark their offense. Through ball, nobody home. That was just, since it's a Sunday, we'll just say they ran the wrong pattern. Easy save for Pratt. This pass went, though, to space with the Striker in front, did not cross correctly. Fresco, the momentary touch, lost it though. NYU again. They're trying to set up March. It's a loose ball into space. Emery tracks it down. And we'll have a throw after Robertson watched it go out of bounds. A little too high for Hilsey. Play back now through the defense of NYU. Here on the near side, Ogawa. The foot there of Rath settles with Funk. On the far side, Moore knocking it away. Throw in on the far side for NYU. Might be Demetrakis, I believe, to throw it in. Get you a yellow card earlier. Just clear that up. We, we missed part of that. Apparently, there were considerable warnings given to her before the yellow card was issued. I thought it was kind of a quick yellow. Just didn't see what happened before. The official kept telling her to move back, move back. Told her again where the spot was. Showed her. She kept moving forward, and that's precipitated the yellow. So it wasn't as quick of a yellow card as that what we saw. Makes a lot more sense, given the context that we just had missed in a different area of the field. So I'm just saying, well, you know, it seemed to be a quick yellow without warnings. Warnings were issued. And right now, the Eagles, 36-40 left to play, looking for their first score of the match for either side. Blanchard in a foot race. Demetrakis plays it off on that far side. And a throw for the Eagles. Actually, check that. That might be... I believe that might be Bresco out there. Try to see if they'll get it into Kolsky in front of the net. Couldn't put it away as Blanchard had a go of it. And it'll be in the direction of throw here for NYU. Good look for the Eagles. Couldn't close it off. Still fighting for it here to see. They can get that offensive light going. Robertson, Dresner on defense. Knocked down De Almagro. Who's fouled. The advantage and a free kick issued to the Violets. Julia Rath will take the free kick for NYU. Fitzgerald's going to check in in a few moments for the Eagles. Still a defender for Sue Patberg's squad. Losing it is Santee. 
have a replay here in a moment. Look back here at the opportunity that presented itself. See the Eagles working it through. And the empty net had an opportunity, but NYU fouled just outside the box, sent over by Sam March. This could be tricky. It will be the best opportunity we've seen so far for the Violets to score. They're going to be just about two steps outside of the penalty area. And it looks like we get a number there. That might be Demetrakis. No, it is Nalani Ogawa to take it. So Ogawa will take the free kick. It's going to be a three-player wall in front consisting of Blanchard, Bell, and might be Hilsey as well. Ogawa will take the free kick. Ogawa's service too high over the crossbar. Ogawa has not scored this year, a junior from Mercer Island, Washington. And that was set too high for any opportunity. Caroline Moore checks out. Back into the match is Jordan Fitzgerald for the Eagles. Eagles, though, find themselves in a spot of trouble, though, at the moment. This has all of a sudden become an NYU offensive match in the last two minutes or so. Eagles did have that opportunity. You saw the replay where they had an offensive opportunity with the keeper out of position. Couldn't close. Here's Blanchard. Freshman from Housatonic, Massachusetts, forward. The header there of Kolsky. Held on to on the near side by Ogawa. Kolsky challenges, wins it, does the senior from Miami. To play it back through Robertson on the ground. Keep it. Robertson on the ricochet. Gets it back, plays it off to the near side. Throw upcoming for NYU and Emery. Right now back on their defensive heels. Extended for the first time. Ogawa will have the throw. Patience before the throw. Shane back outside. He'll connect with Rath. Julia Rath, a long crosser, trying to go to Demetrakis. Cut off there on the far side. Demetrakis stays with it. Fitzgerald gets it back to Shivani Bell, who was running coverage over there. A roll down that far side wing. Play it into the middle. Closest was Bresco for a moment. Right now, Emery, Howard gets a touch for NYU, is looking to try to spark their offense. Still tied nil-nil. He said two teams that have had 11 ties in their meetings. Emery has certainly handled the series pretty well. They are 12-1 and 11 all time against NYU including five consecutive ties. An opportunity to try to pull it back goes off the end line, though, off of an eagle on a would-be shot attempt by Sam March. It'll be a corner on this near side for NYU, their first of the afternoon. So NYU will have this set piece. And like we said, we have seen quite a bit now where NYU has started to become the aggressor offensively. It'll be Julia Rath, the junior, to take it. Two scores and two assists for her. 31 minutes flat, remaining in regulation. NYU, the crosser, it's short, flipped away off the end line, last touched by the Violets. Couldn't put a solid shot on frame. Goal kick will be issued for the Eagles. It looked like it was Ellie Marks who perhaps last touched it for NYU. Haley Pratt will do the honors. She's had a fine day and goal, although has not been tested too much, but NYU only had two shots 
the entire first half. They've had two already here in the second half. Emory still up by 10 in the spread in shots, 14 to 4. Still, though, it shows you how much more offensive life NYU has had here in the second half. Kolsky will concede a throw in here to her teammate, Robertson. Robertson trying to get it into space. Comes off there as it goes to Hilsey. Hopped in front. Held on to by the keeper, Marhan. They're getting the ball into some space in front of the net. Problem is that Henry sometimes has not had the body there to finish it. And a trip here on the near side. He might uh, no foul. Blanchard got taken down by Ogawa. Still have a substitution as March will check out. And it looks like Isabel Turner, one of the starters, a senior from Fort Lauderdale, Florida, tied for the team lead in goals with five comes back on for NYU. Blanchard there again. Some contact. They'll play on with Ogawa. Ogawa's left foot. Trying to thread it forward. If she could to Funk. Blanchard now. Freshman will play it towards the middle. Fitzgerald. And her position goes to Shivani Bell, though, on that far side wing. Here's Bell. She's got a step. Bell tripped up. That should be a foul in the box, and we're going to have a PK. That is a big mistake, I believe, for Demetrakis on coverage. And if it is Demetrakis out there, it is who commits not going to be a card, but is a very big mistake against Giovanni Bell. They will have Hilsey take it, however. So Samantha Hilsey, the junior from Windermere, Windermere, Florida, two scores on 29 shots. She has this penalty kick opportunity. Here is Hilsey. And a score going to the right side, the near side post. Emery up 1-0. Hilsey score at 28-24 on the PK. Another look at this penalty kick. Well placed. No movement at all from Marhan. Even if she would have guessed right, that would have been a highlight reel save from the keeper from NYU. It was well struck, well placed. Hilsey will take advantage of the mistake there by Francesca Dimitrakis. And now at 28 minutes till time will expire, NYU will have to look to equalize. And I guess why not? It will sound like the broken record, but it really is the story of this match. Five in a row have ended in 1-1 draws between these two. So I would assume both teams know that. And you've got to think that NYU now, at least for the final 27 and a half minutes, will make that their mantra. Emery, though, we'll see if they can close it out. Perhaps even add. The PK certainly help them on a team that had seemed momentum wise to have lost it a little bit the momentum shift had certainly changed it looked like for the Eagles for a while I mean they had all of a sudden seemed to be a little bit more on their defensive heels instead of attacking coming back Robertson Robertson getting to it first tripped up out of bounds and it'll still be an NYU advantage Nalani Ogawa will throw it in. Here's 
side. Ogala, they try to go right back to her. Instead, it goes into some space. Wrath will instead have to go back through her defense. A touch for O'Keefe and Howard before Demetrakis on the far side. Now on the run, Bell about two steps behind her trying to close. Instead, the pass goes into that corner, outpaced. We'll have a goal kick for the Eagles. Haley Pratt will do so. Two will enter for the Eagles, including Collage, who comes back for Bresco. Shivani Bell checks out as well. Kylie Hall, number 25, into the match for the Eagles. Eagles will lose it on the near side. Dresner's pass, not a good one on this near side sideline. Throw in here again for Ogawa and NYU. Dresner, stymied, trying to kick it forward. Said De Almagro got in front of her. Long throw from Robertson in the air by Ogawa. Bounds, Bill Emery's direction. One more time. Emery up 1-0. We tick down to the 25-minute mark. Scoring on that PK. Blanchard has it knocked away. But off the end line, a corner for the Eagles. Another opportunity. Second score could be deadly at this point. Certainly that's what they're thinking here. Looks like they're going to have Kylie Hall to take it. Eagles from this near side. Hall's attempt. Left foot. Back post. Headed away. Collage might have gotten a touch. Still pinballed in the air. They'll come back out. Mahoney trying to track it down. Ellie Marks over there, though, for NYU. She's got a step. Nice play by Mahoney to knock it free, but a throw in again for NYU. Hadley Bouchala comes back in for Ellie Marks. There's Krigalski, Ashlyn Krigalski from Dunstable, Massachusetts. Twenty-three forty. And ticking, the Eagles have outshot NYU 15 to four. They lead by one. It came on a penalty kick. After Francesca Demetrakis found Giovanni Bell in the box, it was Hills who took the PK and scored at 28-24. Then where we are at the point in this match. And it's going to be a wild final 20. We know that. Blanchard with an opportunity in space. Blanchard and armbar slips inside the box. Blanchard back out by two of the defenders for NYU. Coming on this near side. An opportunity for Turner. Goes right back, though, to Funk. Gabriella Funk through two defenders. Funk plays it back to the midfield. Krigalski holding forward. Pass Fitzgerald. It'll go all the way to Santee. Left foot. Santee. Long pass out of bounds. Substitution. Dave Matrakis will exit. Actually, check that. Matrakis will go have the throw. Funk will leave. Nikki Lee will come back in. As I say all the time with music, where's the funk gone? We've got a big eye roll around here for that one. Yes. As on top of it, the keeper, Pratt, plants herself there. Santi screened off her keeper to keep anybody away. Be the scoring summary. 
Ilze in the 60, 62nd minute of the match. William Schindler with you. The men will follow against NYU. After this, in case you're curious about that match. The women will have one more home match in the regular season. Possible they could host sometime in the postseason as well. Out the keeper is Haley Pratt. The next women's broadcast will be on the 9th next Saturday against Rochester. That will be an 11 o'clock start just like today. Big UAA matches. Kept in bounds by Kolsky. Kolsky battling off of her. It'll be a goal kick on the ricochet off of Kolsky's foot off the end line. 20 and a half minutes left in regulation. Emery up by a lone score. Two teams that are so competitively close. We've got another one of those here today. Emery, though, trying to win this one in regulation, break the spell of five ties in a row by the same score. Natalie Clark will come in. Mahoney will check out. Clark will enter for, I believe, Kolsky. Caroline Moore will come in for Mahoney. Here's Clark. That's knocked away at the last moment. Clark, as we said, a freshman comes off the bench, but she leads the team with eight scores. They get it to her. We'll go over her head instead. You just never know where. Certainly one of those things that a second goal at this at this point now sub-20 minutes for Emory would most likely be the nail in the coffin with the way their defense is playing. Five shots all afternoon for NYU, three of which have come here in the second half. NYU goes to their bench. Ashlyn Kragalski will check out. As well as, I think, I think Ogawa's out. Julia Beadle looks like has entered the match. One of the substitutions for NYU. Here's Collage. Slides it back to Robertson. Back to the keeper, though, now in Pratt. Just in the air. Jostled from behind there was Robertson, and that's good enough for a foul. Robertson is fouled. Emery will have the free kick. It'll be Lily Dresner, the junior from L.A., to take that free kick. Swings it around through Santee. They've got the veterans working in the backfield. Right foot, Santee in the space, trying to connect with Fitzgerald. Nothing there. Clark had a momentary touch taken there by Beadle. And the NYU Violets. Howard had a momentary touch. Gerald into space. Well, you will retreat. Howard challenged by Clark. Clark will knock it out and we'll have a goal kick. 17 and a half left to play. The Eagles out shooting NYU 15 to 5. If you've just tuned in or missed it, went out to make a sandwich. Samantha Hilsey, the penalty kick at 28-24 has been the lone difference in this match. And Shivani Bell into space. She was fouled in the box by Francesca Demetrakis. That's been the difference. Close out with a beautiful finish on that score, though, from Hilsey on the near side, just inside the post. Emery's going to have an opportunity for a free kick. 
Did they issue a corner? There we go. Okay. We're setting up for that. It will be Kate Robertson over there to take the corner for Emery. Okay, that makes more sense. So here's Emery's corner. And knocked away by the keeper. Saw her fist come through. Marhan punched it out. Blanchard locked up there. A slide tackle with Almagro. Back keeper plays it this time with her feet. This Marhan. 16 minutes left. Emery up by a lone score. NYU trying to equalize here. We said they have played to a 1 1 draw in the last five meetings. Far side, Kylie Hall. A little bit of shake. Now in the box. Works laterally. Here's Clark. Clark, left foot, and score! Her ninth of the season. The freshman will essentially end this match with the second score for Emery at the 15 38 mark. Another look at the finish from the freshman just inside the box. A left footed cross. The keeper might have been screened. Marhan didn't react to it at all. It was well placed. They will give the assist to Kylie Hall. And the Eagles. We know one thing, have certainly ended a five consecutive streak of 1-1 ties. That will not happen today. And for all intents and purposes, now with 15 minutes left to play, unless something miraculous would happen from NYU and really a total collapse for Emory, this match is going to go into the win column for the Eagles. That was a huge nail sent into the coffin there by Natalie Clark. Tell you what, she has been outstanding. Just as a freshman, she hasn't even started this year. The official wanting to talk things over with Kate Robertson. But nine scores, like we said, all have been off the bench. She has certainly been a catalyst. Turner and De Almagro come off. Looks like March and Wrath return for NYU. Whistle, stoppage of play, fouled was Julia Julie Beadle, freshman from Doylestown, Pennsylvania. It'll be back to the keeper. Pratt covers it up. Nice play there. 13.50 and ticking. win will put Emory to their dozenth win of the year. 12 and 4 would be their record. 4 and 2 in UAA play. Been receiving some votes. Ranked in one of the polls. United Soccer polls where a lot of people really kind of go to. They are ranked 20th in the D3Soccer.com poll. We said that's less bandied about. So that's why we, you know, a lot of people look and say, well, they are ranked in one poll, not in the other. Can't go with the 20th, but a lot of people like to go with that first poll where they are not ranked at the moment. Could change. Collage works it back through Dresner. Nice play by Lilly. 
behind conservation. As we go back to Paige Santee. Pass on that far side. Couldn't connect. NYU will have the throw. Trailing by two. 16 shots to five for the Eagles today. Tell you what, they have been the dominant team throughout this pretty much this entire match. There was a period about three, four minutes where they were back on their heels defensively. That was when it was nil-nil. And all of a sudden you thought, well, I, oh, hold on. And then that is when the Dimitrakis foul in the box occurred. Emery got that PK, scored. And since then, especially with that Clark score, now at the 12-minute mark, I mean, everything has certainly changed. Dresner will hold on to it before flipping it now. Trying to connect with Klar. Keep her out just on the edge of the box. Klar runs into her. That could be a card. I believe it's going to be one. Yep. Yellow card on Natalie Klar. Marhan out there. That's an awkward spot. Not sure if we can get another look at that. Um, as she seems to be okay. We don't have, okay, we don't have that. But you know, it's one of those, it's a, that's a tough one from both perspectives. It's like a late hit in football. Actually, we do have that. And if you're the keeper, you've got that right, and they want to protect the keeper. You also want to be aggressive if you're an attacker, but I think I mean, that is the right call on a card. Clark, freshman, I mean, that's one thing she will learn. You like the aggressiveness, but... Again, stay away from the cards. And in that opportunity, too, looking at the score, you don't want to get anybody hurt. You don't want to perhaps disqualify yourself for a future match. So the exuberance there certainly not the worst thing, but just gets you in trouble. And Clark will dial it back. Here's Clark again, trying to work inside. Wrestled away from her. Somehow here on the near side sideline, a throw for the Eagles. Continuing to pour it here. Just past 11 minutes left to play. Kate Robertson will have the throw. Gets it in the Clark. Bounces back. Blanchard. Blanchard fighting for it. Comes off. And we'll have a throw for the Eagles. Near side. Blanchard instead will give it off to Robertson once more. Emery up by two scores. Certainly holding on to it right now in the attacking third. Klar miss space. Kills some time. Dragging it down as Ellie Marks. Comes back out to Fitzgerald, though. The Eagles remain on the attack. Outside the defense holding strong, though, as Maddie Howard sent it away. Fitzgerald will have the throw on the far side wing now for the Eagles. Continue to salt away time. Eagles right now happy to play this way as they'll go all the way back through Lily Dresner right the center line. And Santi. And they're going into an offensive shell. There is such a thing. Continuing to play pressure. But very comfortable where they sit. Pass over the head of Blanchard trying to track it down. Came from Dresner. Fighting for it. End line goal kick here for NYU. NYU will go to their bench. We pass nine and a half minutes left to play. Kelts will check out. Actually, no, that was Nikki Lee to check out. Looks like back in is Gabriella Funk. Beetle. Outside. Trying to thread it down that far side, but Santi in the air lifts it out of bounds. No, it stayed in bounds on that far side. Now it's out of bounds. Now it's Emery Ball. 8.50 and ticking. Klar, a touch, trying to get it into some space. Held onto there by Rath. Oh, headed almost right into her. <laughs> Agnew. Had a close encounter. Agnew fighting forward. Keeper out. Marhan. 
will have the stop. Eight twenty and ticking. A two nil lead for the Eagles. Blanchard into some space near side on the run. She has Robertson. Knocked away. Good play there. Closing it off. For NYU. It'll be a corner for the Eagles. That's Kylie Hall to take it. Held on to by the keeper. Drops it at her feet, though. Now in control is Marhan. Two big scores. First on the PK was Tilsey at 28-24. Natalie Clark sent everyone, will send everyone home happy in a comfortable spot at 15-38 was the second score. And really, as we said, has ended this match. Now with seven minutes and ten seconds left, It would have to be some sort of miracle for NYU, who's only mustered five shots, three of which have come here in the second half. Not really had any offense to speak of as collage. Kind of fight in space. A whistle. She'll lose control. But, I mean, really, Emery, the only thing in doubt now really would be the score if Emery could have a shutout and tack one on. Come in for NYU. Focus though here with Agnew coming out for the Eagles. Returning is Hilsey. We do have a nice little note to pass on to here. If Emery, and this would be for the final 6.05, if you're wondering why you should stick around, other than maybe I'm a good sleep aid at some point. Here you go. If Emery can hold on to this as Clark checks out and Kolsky back in, Emery, if they get this shutout, it'll be a five-game shutout streak. And that'll be the first time the Eagles have done so since 2014. In case you were wondering what the school record is, not sure if this is counting postseason or not, or if we'd have to wait till next year if they would keep it going. School record is seven straight shutouts, and they've done it three times. 98, 2005, and the 2011 season. It's kind of impressive in its own right. Morgan Brandy, we will check in for the first time this afternoon. Came into action for the Eagles. Brandon Wee in as Eagles looking for their fifth consecutive shutout. Under five minutes here. And like we said, it would also break the five-match streak of 1-1 one -one ties between these two. We know that's not happening. Either way you slice it. The best NYU could hope for at this point would be a 2-2 two -two tie. And the chances of that happening, about four and a half minutes left with Emery with a corner kick again. And that is in front, headed back out, and almost in. Let's see it, it go in. It deflected everywhere, and it will be a score. We're going to have to wait to see who they'll credit that to. It was just a mosh pit of players. Emery, though, a score at 424 for their third of the match. And I'm not going to take a guess until we hear some official scoring. There's some shrugs kind of all around, which is not a good sign. <laughs> and here you go. Like we said, take your pick. That was... Anything but definitive as far as identification. We know it was a score. We know Emery scored it. We know it's 3-0. Still had 
have not heard an announcement, still have not gotten an official statistical credit. Paige Santee. It will be Hall with a second assist. Santee score at 424. Her second goal of the year. The senior from Monroe, Connecticut. Inside, frying it into the back of the net. And the Eagles certainly have had a huge afternoon. They're playing their best soccer at the right time. You saw it in the last match. Seeing in this match, the defense has been solid. And it, you said, I think the only time there's been really any concern, maybe a two or three minute stretch, and a change then, I'll tell you what, certainly has been Emory looking good. For Eagles fans, they've got to be very happy with what they see. Rochester, the next one on the schedule, and then the postseason. So they're going to have about six days till the next match. Get rested. And that's headed back almost. Whoa, Fitzgerald. A little bit of a scare. He's not on frame, thankfully. But Fitzgerald headed it back off the end line. He's in the direction there where it could have gone sour. Julia Rath will have a corner here for NYU. Closing two minutes. Headed back. Ushered out by Emery into some space. Closing down on it is Kaylee Delaney. Maddie Howard, senior, to the far side. Minute 40 left in regulation. Emery up 3 0. Last score was for Paige Santee. All have come here in this second half. Started with Hilsey on a penalty kick at 28-24. Clark, 15-38. Pretty much sealed this shut. Cherry on top has been the Santee goal in the scrum in front of the net at 4:24. Those have been the three. 70 seconds left. An impressive win for the Eagles. The win they've needed. A win against a good NYU team. We told you NYU beat Rochester, though, their last time out 1-0 in Rochester. Emory beating NYU here 3-0 today, and they will face Rochester up next. It's got to be a good sign for their next opponent. At least in the Eagles' favor. will come on next Saturday, the 9th, 11 a.m. And so the Eagles improving their record to 12 and 4, 4 and 2 in the conference. NYU with one last opportunity, and it'll go off the side of the net. Whoa. Almost the shutout streak coming to an end. It will not, though. Eagles, their 12th win of the year. 7-2 now here at home. They have had five consecutive shutouts, equaling a streak set in 2014. And as the Eagles, with that impressive victory, three scores all in the second half again to recap. Hilsey on the penalty kick. Clark, 15-38. Santee at 4-24. And that will close out this match for the Eagles. NYU falls to 11 and 6 overall and 2 and 4 in the UAA conference and now 5 and 2 on the road. A quality opponent Emory knocks them off today and they will have those 6 days to get ready for Rochester. Till then we say so long for now. I'm William Schindler. Emory winners 3-0.